Bits, what and how do I use path signals? Well, let me show you. Because as of recently, as of me showing you this build and the train line in front of it, a lot of you have noticed I'm using path signals and you've been commenting a lot on the YouTube video, but also asking on the live streams whilst I'm building these live. So today I'm gonna give you a rundown on how they work and how they work in comparison to a block signal. And we're gonna use my setups right here just to explain it a little further because this is a realistic scenario. So the first thing I wanna show you is a block signal. And the reason I wanna show you this because it's a good little introduction into path signals but if you want to learn more about everything else regarding trains and how to optimize them and rail lines and all this kind of stuff there will be a link up in the top right hand corner and my thumbnail on screen right now of my previous train guide video which i'll put a link for in the description where you can find more info or basic stuff on the trains so what is a block signal a block signal is basically a indicator that is placed at the uh the connection point between two tracks and if there's a train ahead of it what it will do it will turn off just like that and that's saying if there is a train in this section before this block signal that it will not advance or let it go uh, until the train has cleared ahead of it so the best way for me to describe this is if i grab one myself you're going to notice the train tracks have gone two different colors we have purple and we have blue so if there is a train coming down at the purple section, this signal is looking for any obstacles in this blue section, i.e. a train. So if there's a train in this blue section or in this blue block, as what Satisfactory refers it to is a block section, that is a block. So if there's a train uh, coming down here, uh, this signal is always observing this blue one. And the only reason it's observing this blue one is because there's another signal down here, which is observing the block after, which is that pinkish purple one over there. So let's move back to this one. As you can tell, there is no trains in this blue section. So if I quickly go into here and put down an electric motive, you're going to notice that now has gone to a red symbol, meaning the train that comes along here will stop at this section until this blue one has left. So if we remove this one now, it's now gone back to green and any trains that are coming along here will now advance. And that's the simplest thing about block signals. So the next question I get asked is, how far apart do you put your block signals? Well, to be honest, when you first start in your train line, a good two length is a good distance. So what I mean by two length is when you go down to place a train line from one section or a fresh new line, you want to bring that as far as you can along and then you create a second section. So a good two train line placements at maximum length is a good distance for block signals. But when it comes to high density traffic areas, I highly recommend you make it a, a lot, lot smaller. And as you can see here, this section is a lot smaller and it, it's basically got a block new enough at a full length of a um, railway uh, track itself. And the reason this is, is because there's, there's a lot of turns, there's a lot of traffic in this area. And if I was to remove that signal right there and I was to remove that signal right there, you're going to notice now when I pull this out it's gonna have a white block here which is pretty short but this pink one has is a lot lot longer which means if there is a train in this block section this train here will wait a lot longer until that train leaves so if i put that back in there and i put that back in there you're going to notice now this has created a lot more blocks along this section and the more blocks you have the more chances your trains are going to be moving and getting to its destination but bits i come to this video to learn about path signals and you're talking about blocks well let's get to path signals right now and it's just that i wanted to give you a bit of a refresher so you can understand how path signals work because they work very similar but with a little bit of a difference so the first thing i'm going to show you right here is this intersection because i have a block signals and i have path signals i've got multiple trains coming in and out of here as you'll see as we go through but i want to show you how path signals work and where you're going to be mainly using them and that is right here at junctions so let's just get a path signal or a block signal and have a look at the colors on the track and as we can see the junction is fully lime green meaning that that whole section right here is one block so if i was to put block signals uh, at every entrance instead of the path signals here only one train can enter this lime green section at one time meaning if a train comes along here it'll wait it here until that train leaves here and that's going to be very unoptimized unless uh, otherwise your trains are going to be backing up 
and all this kind of stuff. But you want to kind of keep your trains moving at all times. So to combat this, this is where we use path signals. And how path signals work is they don't just look at the colour of the actual block itself. They actually look at the individual train lines and where they're going to. And in this train signals case, or well, this path signals case, it's going to go left or it's going to go straight forward. So how do they work? Well, if we go back over here, we can see this turquoise in uh, this block section here. Once a train enters right here, it's going to send a signal to that path signal right there to let it know the direction it's going to go. So let's say, for example, it's going straight forward. That means this path signal will explain to this path signal and to this path signal that his train who's coming from this direction is going to occupy this line right here. So that train will say, okay, I can't allow any trains to turn right, but I can allow trains to go forward because that track and that track does not intertwine with each other. So that means if a train comes down this section and enters this turquoise section, it will send a signal here to this path signal and let it know it's going to go straight forward if that's the direction it's going to go. So then that path signal will go, okay, I've got a, our, our friend, the other path signal over here is allowing a train through this section. So I can only allow you to go this way uh, because that's the direction technically you're going and that's the direction I'm giving you. But if the train that wanted to come down here wanted to turn right, this train signal will communicate with the train to tell it it cannot turn right because it's already been reserved by this path signal right here. So this will stay red until that turn and that train that goes along that corner goes past this block signal and into this blue one. This train will then give the go ahead to enter that section. Hopefully that was not too confusing. But the way the the, the way you want to place these is if you uh, go to your junction, your path signal should always be at the entrance to that junction. So if a train's coming down here like this one, it needs to be literally on the inbound side. Same for this side. The train that's coming down here has a path signal. The train that comes along there has a uh, has a path signal. But then you must be wondering why is the block signals here? Well, the block signals minimalize the color green in this block. So this is where a train will come along here, this white section, and once it leaves this green section here and enters this dark green section, that allows and communicates to all the other path signals that, that train has left there and all the other routes can commence until another signal is received from another train. So to put it in simple terms, with block signals, you want to place them on the exit of the junction on every line. So this train line here that's coming in here, it hits this path signal, but on the outbound side, you want to put your block signal. The best way for me to show you where path signals go is I'm going to eliminate these path signals. So I'm just going to eliminate that. I'm going to eliminate that. And I'm going to eliminate that. And I'm going to replace it with block signals. So let's just do that. And then let's just do, let me put this back in here. Where was this? It was there. And then I'm going to put one there as well. So what I'm going to do is, and you could do this in your game as well, is if you go to a junction like this and you are going to take my advice on here and you're going to put down a path signal here. Because why? Because this is an inbound to the junction. Okay, so let's replace this with a path signal. You're going to notice the other ones are now doing exclamation marks. Ignore the path signal, but what that's indicating you, to you is that one needs to be a path signal and so does that one. So let's do that. So let's change that to a path signal. Let's change that to a path signal. Look what happens. The connection is complete, but that's the best way for me to describe it to you. So any other ones that are flashing exclamation mark, once you put down the first one correctly, which is like again, is on the inbound of the junction, any other ones that are flashing that are block signals, replace it with a path signal, just like that. So put your block signals down on every entrance and every exit of the junction and then replace the uh if well if you don't understand it clearly or uh, replace the um the path signal with the inbound like i keep saying is the inbound to the junction that's all you need to do and any other that are uh, exclamation mark just replace it with a uh, a path signal that's the best way for me to describe how path signals work okay so now here is another thing and you need to consider with path signals because of how they receive their signals and as you know this turquoise section right here is quite long and the reason it's long is because 
when a train comes into this section, it's going to obviously be coming down here at full speed. But as soon as it enters this section right here, it's already sent the signal to that path signal and reserved its spot. But if I was to put a block signal a lot closer, let's just say, where's the closest spot? It would be here, right? It's going to be there. And as we can see now, this has now got a light blue and then a dark blue. That's the colors we're going to go with. What's going to happen now is when the train comes along here, it needs to get closer to the path signal and it's going to enter this section right here. So as soon as it enters this block, it's now going to send the signal to the path signal. But what's going to happen is because this is coming down here at, you know, train speeds of 100 kilometers per hour, it's going to slow down and that path signal might not have registered where it's going to turn yet so what you need to do is you need to create a good distance space before the path signal so actually um for the train to register where it needs to turn otherwise insufficient space is if i was to put this here uh just like that and then i was to put a block signal down here wait for it just there this path signal won't receive the signal from the train until it enters this green section. Look how small that is. That means the train is going to fully stop here and that path signal will just be inoperable. So the train will be in this green section and then it will give the signal to where it's going to go. But by the time that happens, the train's going to stop. So the longer the distance before the path signal is when it will register, but you don't want it too far because the train will register way. Imagine if you set it way over there. The train was to send the signal way over there to that. It will allow that train to go, okay, I'm turning right. I have priority. I set my signal first. So all the other trains coming in the other direction will be waiting for that train to come down here. So what I recommend is about a three length uh, track in, in, in distance. Does that make sense? So one train length, uh, sorry, not one train length, one track length, two track length, three track length. That's what I found to be the most optimal, but you can make custom breaks in your track if it, if it helps. So as you can see now, the blue, this one is still too short for me because a train will enter this block right here at this blue section and it will still have too short of a distance for it to keep its optimal speed before it sends the signal. So it will be slowing down. I'm going to show you this for example, I think. Uh, so let's just put a this blue signal here I'm going to have to wait for a train to come down. All right, here we go. We've got a train coming down this line right now. And as I stated before, what it's going to do, it's not going to send the signal until it enters this yellow section, which is way too close to that path signal. So as you can see, it's going to come down to a very slow crawling space until that now goes green and it will continue its journey. And now it's going to pick back up speed and it goes through here at a bloody slug's pace. So if we remove this block signal now, we can see that this whole section is a lot longer. And that means when a train comes down here again, it's going to... this That signal will decide if it, this train can go through so this speed of the train can actually stay consistent and not slow down. Just like this train right here. This train's now on its way down. And as you can see, it's about to enter this block right here. Once it does, that signal has already changed color, meaning this train is going through at a lot faster speed and not slowing down like it did with this small input here. And there we have it, guys. So that is basically path signals and block signals. So check out my other content right here. And obviously, have a fantastic rest of your morning, afternoon, or evening. And as always, keep bloody smiling. And I'll see you in another video.